Welcome back to Slinging the Slang, a video podcast where we take a look at our slang, our idioms, their meanings, their origins, everything from the funny and hilarious <laughs> to the downright bizarre. I'm Slang Man David Brooks. Speaking of downright bizarre, I will be one of your hosts and the author of 30 books on idioms and slang. And I'm Monica Mauto, Director of Education for an English Language School in Southern, 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 Southern California. In case you didn't know, we are in Southern California. Yeah, just wanted to, to make that very clear <laughs> that we're in Southern California. Um, and it's quite sunny. It's quite warm. Um, it's and sun- I love it's, slang. It's sunny in Southern California where silly Monica is speaking slang. I'm trying to make some kind of an alliteration with all your S's there. Welcome back. We're so glad to have you here. If you have any questions, <laughs> Whether you are an English lover or you're learning English, please email me at david at slangman.com. Ask us anything you want. I will take all of your questions, any questions that are embarrassing. I'll give them to Monica. So please ask us anything. Thanks. So on that note, so this was actually Monica's idea. Every now and then, Monica comes up with a real gem, and that was to compare the older slang, and see how has it changed to today's teen slang. What happened? How did it change? Why did it change? Let's take a look. I love ex- examining our old slang. Some of our old slang is so fun. You know that I always talk about the 1920s word spifflicated. Remember what that one meant? I got spifflicated last night. You got drunk. Drunk. Again, we should, we should bring spifflicated back because it's so funny. Oh, but my favorite word, my favorite 1920s word, Monica, what does this mean? Um, I, I'll give you no context. Flap doodle. <laughs> Love that. Flap doodle? Yeah. Oh, Monica, please. That's a bunch of flap doodle. Oh, ah, that's a bunch of baloney. Oh, bolo- oh, baloney. Oh, we're really cleaning it up today, aren't we? Yes. That's a That's a pile of bull. That's a pile of bull. That's flap doodle. I say we bring flap doodle back. I think we should start using it every every episode. That's a bunch of <laughs> flap doodle. Let's oh. tell the Gen Zers that. Well, they'll take it, which you'll see. They'll take it and they will update it. And here's some here are some expressions and some slang from the 1920s that's been updated. Let's see if you know what it means in today's slang. Okay, I will give you the new slang word and the old slang word and you try to tell me what you think it means okay we're gonna start easy we're gonna start easy the word is from 2023 from the teens is hype and the old 1920s word was the monkey's eyebrows um hype something that is very popular something that is uh, really happening. It's hyped up. It's it, it, uh, yep. It's that that movie was the monkey's eyebrows. Monica, the I monkey's love eyebrows. <laughs> I love what you're wearing. It is the monkey's eyebrows. You look like the monkey's eyebrows today. Or hype. It's kind of like, like the bee's knees. Exactly. The bee's knees. The monkey's eyebrows. And there's another one which we'll talk about a little further down and see if you get it. Keeping that in mind, the bee's knees, the monkey's eyebrows. I got another one. It was really popular back in the day. Okay. Oh, here's something. This is going to be hard. Okay. I gave you an easy one. This is going to be hard. Monica, a teen in 2023 would use the expression to catch a fade. In the 1920s, to biff someone. So we have huh? to catch a fade. You're like, hello? To catch a fade and to biff someone. Catch a fade. You want context? I better give you context. Give me oh, context. He, he biffed me in the eye. Oh. Boom. To hit someone? To punch. To biff. To punch someone? Giving them a black eye? Yep. To, to punch. To, and that's to catch a fade. To catch a fade. To fight. catch a fade. Don't you love, wouldn't that be a great name for a movie? Yeah, yeah but it would probably only be good for about two minutes because you know how the teens are. They'll change the meaning of the title. They'll change it. Exactly. They'll change it. 
Yeah, uh, that's by, that's by noon works. today, it'll be something else. That's right. By the time we're done with this, it'll be something Oh, wait, else. I think it just happened. Oh, just happened. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, already changing. Okay, here's one that's, uh, this is going to be tricky. I, I, lo- I love trying to trick you. This is a popular teen slang word right now. Okay. And it is pronounced and even written S H A W T Y. Like shorty, shorty, shorty. It's pronounced shorty. shorty. So a shorty or shorty used to be in the 1920s a ready heady or an able grable. A ready heady or an able grable from the 20s, but today a shorty or a shoddy. A ready heady. Oh, Monica, I love what you've done to yourself. You are one ready heady. You are um, a shorty. You- you look great. You look good. Exactly. Uh, so, or you can say shoddy. A shoddy, yeah. I, th- I think teens only assume this, that it comes from New York or Chicago, where it's pronounced that way. But the word is shorty, but because so many people say shoddy, where it came from, we see it. S-H-A-W-T-Y, S-H-A-W-T-Y a shoddy. Shoddy. So, wow. And not to be confused with being shoddy. Because oh, right. the word shoddy yes. actually mm-hmm. means n- n- kind of s- sloppy. It's a, sh- right. it's a shoddy job. It wasn't done well. Right. So for you English learners out there, a job that was done in a shoddy way is fast, without yeah. any caring. It was really shoddy. Yeah. My car still good. doesn't work. This job was, the mechanic did a shoddy job. But a, right. shor- a shoddy, sure, or yeah, shorty, Sh- and shoddy. shorty, shoddy, and shorty. That's that's hard. Welcome to English. Yeah, yeah. We know English is not easy, so we 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 will always be patient, and we will always answer your questions. Always, always um, patient. Okay, here's one. Give me another one now, David. Okay, um, I will right now. And this one is very interesting, Monica, because it is old, but I heard a teen use it last week. Here it is. Okay. Okay. I'll give you the new way. Um, yeah, I'm buying what you're selling. And back in the 20s was, yeah, I dig. I dig. I understand. Right. I understand you. I agree with you. Exactly. To dig. And that was actually from the 20s. It came back big time in the 50s, like the beatniks, which were the group yes. of people kind of speaking slang in the 50s. Right. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I'm into it. Yeah, I dig it. I'm down for it. I'm down. I'm down for it or I'm up for it. I'm down or up. I'm down for it. Yeah, it was up for it. Now it's down for it. Yep, down or up. Yep, we've got both directions covered. So that is, yeah, to dig is now I'm buying what you're selling. So dig is back. I hear dig. I'm shocked. Yeah, I love when. Because I love that. I loved that, you know, back in the day when I was at younger which wasn't too far back of course back in the 1700s okay <laughs> and you know people did use that word i know thanks david um people did use the word dig i dig it hey can you dig this can you dig, dig this like if you're gonna listen to a new song like dig this get into this listen and to why because dig is just to take a shovel and push it in the ground and pull dirt out so i dig it i don't know why I don't know where that came from. I don't yeah. know what the etymology is, why we would say that, but it was super popular. Well, speaking of super popular, I, this one, okay, you 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 may not understand the new version, but you'll understand the older version. Okay. If I said to you, to, in, in 2023, teen slang, dang, huh? C-U-H, dang, huh? And back in the 1920s, it was G Willikers. She Willikers. Willikers. Uh, wow. wow. Surprise. Yeah. yeah, dang, huh? That's like <laughs> dang from the south, meaning darn it. Uh, ka is cousin. Dang, huh? So dang, ka is how I hear that often. My workout partner always says, hey, what's up, ka? That's what he says to me. That's how he greets me. What's up, ka? So yeah, dang, ka was, was G. Willikers. And remember Glorioski? Glorioski, same thing back in the 20s. It meant wow. Glorioski. Remember that from 1920? You know, 
when you were a little girl. See how I did that? Um, I I love goofing around with Monica. That's why Monica is here, so I can torture her. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, David. Yes, I, I I live for these podcasts so I can be tortured <laughs> by David, slang man David Burke. So I figure if I don't do it to you first, you're going to do it to me. Um, so, okay, here's one. I, 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 I've heard of this, too. Hotsy Totsy from 1920s. And today's word is bussin. Oh, this is positive. Yes. Um, bussin means it's it's looking good. Looking good. You're bussin. You're bussin. That movie was bussin. The food is bussin. Or hotsy totsy means really good. Hotsy totsy. And it all. Oh, hotsy totsy. Hotsy totsy. And there was another one that was an alliteration or a kind of rhyming. Razzle dazzle. Gonna razzle dazzle, Monica. You are razzle dazzle. That yeah, today that's is, positive. You, yes. you you're razzle dazzle. You're it. You're all. You're all that. You're all that. All that, and you slay. That's what today's razzle dazzle. Sl- that's one of my favorite. I love that. I, I, I hope it doesn't leave. I don't the system very I quickly because I love that expression. You slayed it. You sl- you slayed it. Or simply, oh, you slay. Or Girl, you slay. You slay. Uh, what about else? Oh, here's one, 1920s. Uh, okay, the new version of this word I'm going to give you in a second. The 2023 version is JIT. Hey, what's up, JIT? Hey, bub. Bub from the 1920s. Hey, you bub. Uh, hey, uh, fr- your f- good friend, yeah. buddy. Yeah, buddy, hey, bub. I don't know why bub, but yeah, bub was, hey, buddy, hey, bub. And JIT was the new one. Oh, yeah, that's JIT, because you're that's, legit. You're, that, that's what I think. It was JIT. That's what I think. Yeah, that's JIT. That's what I say. Got a couple more here for you. Oh, yeah. We've heard this before, Monica. What does this mean to you? I'll give you the 1920s version, and you tell me what the new version is. 23 skidoo. <laughs> oh, Monica, I got to leave. 23 skidoo. Skedaddle. Skedaddle. Yes. And that means skidoo. And that means what? To skedaddle, to skidoo. To, means, yeah, to leave. To I leave. gotta go. I gotta and, bounce. I, I gotta bounce. And well, what was funny to me in, in French, the old French slang was uh Van Deux. Van Deux, which means twenty-two. Twenty-two. So they lost a skidoo along the way, somehow. In France. Wait a minute. So twenty the number twenty two has to do with leaving? Well, we we would say twenty three skidoo. The French would say vandu. They would say twenty two, not twenty three skidoo. They just say twenty two. They lost a skidoo somewhere along the way. I don't know what happened. A skidoo got, got dropped. <laughs> hey, if you're French out there, tell us what's going on with that. Yeah, why why was it vandu and we would say twenty three skidoo? We Monica and I not only want to know, we need to know. We, we, we need we, to know. We, we are, after all. Because it will haunt us. We will not be able to sleep. We will lose sleep over this. How will we be able to sling the slang without knowing that? Um, and and yeah, today's most common way is uh, finna dip. Got to go. Finna dip. Got to dip. Got to bounce. Gotta bounce. I love I love. I got to bounce. I, gotta, I love yeah, that. Because it's just so, so visual. It's so, it's so casual. It's so. Yeah, it is. It's. It's, yeah, it's a like, good descriptive. Ah, I got to bounce. See ya. Mata, peak word. Uh, here are the last three. Oh, this is good. Okay, I'm going to give you the new one first. Okay. Mid. The old one from 1920s. Pipsqueak. Pipsqueak. That, say that, that movie was mid. That was a pipsqueak of a movie. Um, I want to say meh. Meh. Because exactly. mediocre. Exactly. It was not meh. great, not bad, but just kind of eh, yeah. meh, eh, mid. It, mid. It was a pips. It was a pips. So squeaker. pips squeak. Yes, because pips squeak. I always thought it meant something, somebody small. What a pips. Yeah, yeah. Some some kind of wimpy guy. Right, right. Wimpy, which is good slang for somebody who's kind of weak and frail. But yeah, a pips squeak of a movie is just eh, movie is kind of small, not interesting, not worth even looking at. So it's kind of mid. Good to, important to know that, David. Okay, this one, Monica. 
You better know this one because we talked about the monkey's eyebrows. We talked about the bee's knees. And mm -hmm. now we're going to talk a little bit about the snake's hips. <laughs> did you know that snakes have hips? I did not know that. Did you know that, Monica? I did not know that, David. If a snake wore a dress, the dress would just fall. There's no hips to support the dress. That's why we've never seen a snake wear a dress. They have no hips. It would just fall. So, <laughs> so how are, would you use the snake's lips? How would you no, use that? No, 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 snake's hips. The hips, H I P S. Hips. Oh, oh, well, they, well, they're just one long vertebrae. I, I, exactly. So, Monica, you are the snake's hips. Or is it a slang? Love this one. Oh, you are snatched. Or you ate. You ate. You oh, well, I know what that means. That means you, you were amazing. Amazing. You amazing. Ate and ate all the crumbs. Exactly. We've talked we've we've covered that one before. Here's the last one. Yeah, you used Mariah Carey in that one. I did. Yes, that's when I saw some Mariah Carey fan at the end of a concert. She was being interviewed uh, on the news, and she said, oh, Mariah Carey, she ate. She ate all the crumbs off that table. Her dress was snatched. And, I, and of course, being a slang man, I'm like, I understand that. Every single word. Thank you very much. So I'll just bring it here and see if I can trick Mon Monica. That's As you know, that's that's how I gather all the slang words for these things. I think, what what will Monica be surprised about? How can I trick her? That's my whole Goal in oh, I Monica. love being tricked. All right. Well, I got one for you. The last one. Monica, you're a corker. A corker. A corker. A corker. Now, David, 1920s. please don't get after me for, for drinking a lot of wine. Oh, it, it does come from it does come from wine. A corker. When you the reason you open up champagne with a cork. Because you oh. are celebrating something fantastic. So, Monica, oh. you are a corker. So you're, you're fun. Corker. You're fun. You're awesome. You are not mid. You are you are the bee's knees and the snake's hips. The, monkey's, the monkey's eyebrows. eyebrows. The snake's the, hips. Bussin. You're bussin. And, we, and, and, uh, and let's see how, in, in conclusion, Monica and I hope that you have a hotsy totsy razzle dazzle week. I guess I better update that. We hope your week is bussin', is just hype, and that you meet people who are nothing but corkers. That's what we hope. For. Yay, corkers! Go, Yay, corkers. corkers! We need and more corkers! We do. The world needs more corkers. And if you'd like to speak more slang and learn more slang, just like Monica and I do, please check out my books at www.slangman.com. And we hope you'll join us very soon for another deep dive into the ever-changing, ever-evolving, ever-colorful world of slang. And we will see you here next week when Monica and I will be slinging, slinging the, the slang. slang. Till next week, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Bye for now. <laughs>